On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me food poisoning, but it was an accident. Something to do with the rhubarb that had been in the sink too long. I'm not really sure. I don't know what rhubarb is, but it made me sick, so I don't eat it anymore. You too much information? TMI? Fair enough. Unfortunately, Arlen can't make it today. He's down at the emergency room, I think, getting some antibiotics or possibly an amputation for the infection in his foot from the, uh, from the other ankle bracelet they put back on. So he'll be with us tomorrow, though, hopefully. So the fourth present on my present list is for anybody who is still doing manual macro focus stacking. You may recall about a year ago, I reviewed this lovely piece of equipment. This is the Nisi NM180 macro focusing rail. This is the one that uh, I recommended uh, would probably be best to index off this small knob. And, and uh, yeah, it was, it was a good rail. Well, let me tell you what happened after this rail came out. Uh, it was nothing wrong with the rail. The rail was good then. It's still good now. It's the one with the four feet on it. But after it came out and people started buying it, a couple of people, actually a total of four people, noticed that there was some play in the, in the cart on top. And that there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be any play at all. It should be fairly solid and it shouldn't move unless by the knob. Uh, it turns out, I, I took mine apart to get to the bottom of what exactly was going on. And it turns out that some of them during shipping, there's a little screw, a grub screw at the very bottom of this hole that works its way loose. And it had worked its way loose. And when it does, the ball screw loosens. Now, it's a piece of cake. It takes two seconds to fix. But if you don't know about it, you wouldn't know to fix it. So about four or five people got in touch and uh, you just put an Allen wrench down there and tighten it and that's it. And, and Bob's your uncle, you're good to go again. And those who have bought this with the exception of one uh, gentleman who didn't like it, everybody else seemed to, to get on well with it and enjoyed it. Well, it's a year later and Nisi has handed the torch over, I suppose one might say, to a brand called Fittest. Fittest as in not the fattest, the fittest. Their rail looks very, very similar to our old friend, the Nisi, but this isn't. This is actually the MR for macro rail 180 Mark II. There was a Mark I, and the Mark I actually had a uh, rack and pinion mechanism, kind of like the cheap ones that we looked at last time, the, the two axis ones. Very nice looking rails. I never actually had one of them, but uh, this is their new MR2 Mark II, and it is strikingly similar to the Nisi, with a few exceptions. And some of them are good, and some of them are less good. But let me explain to you what I have done with my rails and why I wanted them. I thought that these would be a great uh, two axis positioning system for high magnification macro, where you would mount something, you, probably a, a microscope stage on the top uh, platform, and then mount one platform, <coughs> platform on the other one, like so, so that you could then get positioning movement in two different axes, just like so. And in order to do that, I needed to be absolutely sure that this rail, the new rail, was going to have the same kind of tolerances and the same kind of fluid motion that the Nisi had. Never having heard of fittest, uh, I wanted to be absolutely sure. So I put it through its, test, uh, through its paces and I tested it quite thoroughly. I didn't take it all the way apart, but I had the luxury of having two of these. And because I was going to be using them for positioning, I got a chance to get to know it really well. Now, just like the Mark I, or just like the old Nisi rail, I should say, uh, this uh, rail is a solid piece of uh, aluminum that's been machined 
so it's uh, it's very sturdy. Now, unlike the Nisi, which you'll remember had screw off feet that went into teeny weeny little screw holes in the bottom, like that, like this. Uh, instead of having that, what the new rail does, what the fittest rail does, is it has put these high powered magnets into the feet and into the base of the rail, which uh, pop off and then screw into the bottom. Now, the feet have the same problems they had with the other rail. In other words, they lift the center of gravity and make the rail largely unusable. The idea is that these feet are supposed to lift the fold out knob up here, up above ground level, which is fair enough, they do that. But once they do, the center of gravity of the rail is too high to really use it as a rail. So we have the same issue that we had with, with number one. Now, just like with the first one, we can raise this up. We can put this on a quick release plate. We can put it on a piece of wood. We can mount it on a, a tripod head. We can do a lot of things with it to get up, to get it up off the ground uh, and then get clearance for the knob like this. But it doesn't seem to be a big uh, step in the right direction compared to the other one. But that is counterbalanced by some of the more subtle things that, that they've done. It still has the rotating stage. You have to loosen the, the, this to turn the stage. Little screw that tensions the, the worm screw at the bottom of this hole is now on the other side of the platform. So if you had one of these before and had a problem, you would go to the other end to fix it. Now, just like with the uh, Nisi device, this comes with a, a nice carry bag. It's, it's not as fancy schmancy as the Nisi bag, to be honest, but it's still nice. It's got a nice smooth nylon lining and uh, the, the whole thing fits nicely in the bag. So that, that's good. It also comes with three very important Allen wrenches and a, an adapter to turn your quarter inch uh, screw into a 3 8 inch, screw, 3 16 inch screw. Uh, that's for mounting on the, uh, on, on the uh, tripod. Now, I was bothered last time by the fact that it had a single mount position and that still bothers me. I really think that in the third iteration of this rail, they need to come up with a second mount point so that there isn't a tendency for this to wiggle. Of course, if you're mounting it in a quick release plate, it's not going to wiggle as long as the quick release plate is mounted on two points. So these Allen wrenches, what makes this so important is in the instance that you get yours and there is a, some play, there should be zero, none at all. If there is, it's a simple matter of putting this two millimeter Allen wrench into the base of that hole, seating it in the screw and cinching it tight. That's it. And if you were to do that every once in a while, uh, it would continue to be nice and tight. So you'll notice that the carriage has a total of three twist knobs. This is, of course, the open and close of the quick release plate, as you would imagine. It comes with a really nice uh, uh, quick release plate uh, camera mount, just like uh, the other ones did. But this is a beautiful, uh, nicely shaped one. And it also has the gap so that you can put your peak design uh, grommets on there to hold it in place. Now, there are three controls on the carriage. The first is to open and close the quick release clamp. The second is to uh, uh, tighten and loosen the uh, action on the twisty part. So the tighter that is, the harder it is to turn. So you can lock it in place. This one on the bottom is a tensioning knob for the whole rail, meaning that the rail gets easier to turn if you loosen this. Now, one person also had some issue with one of these screws coming loose. Uh, and uh, when this came loose, the carriage became a bit loose too. Just a matter of a quarter turn to tighten that up and it didn't do it anymore. So what is different then about this rail? Well, functionally, it, there's nothing that different about it. It's, it's largely the same rail. What is different in a, a bad direction, I'm afraid, is that the knob on the end, the small knob that was our savior in the first uh, instance, because it had the linear 
grooves. I even mentioned in the video that most of these uh, companies will put crosshatch grooves on these nods and that thank goodness Nisi didn't because it can be used for indexing so that you can get fine control over it. Well, unfortunately, they've gone back to crosshatching. Um, now, this doesn't mean you cannot put marks uh, at each of the crosshatches and use it to index. And that is certainly a, a, a perfectly reasonable thing to do. The screw itself is beautifully made, stainless steel. It's uh, uh, seated nicely in a pair of bearings on either end. The knobs are actually um, pressure fit onto the end of the, the lead screw. I tried very hard uh, to get the knob off one end or the other to see if it was possible to remove this knob. In the Nisi rail, the knob on the end did not come off. And unfortunately, it doesn't come off uh, with this rail either. The one thing about this that stands out against the Nisi rail is the smoothness of the ball screw action. It is like butter. And uh, it's so easy to turn and it has so little backlash that what I did was I took one of my rails and I am in the process of uh, turning it into what is hopefully going to be uh, the world's cheapest macro rail, automated macro rail. I just mounted a stepper motor uh, uh, next to it, adjacent to it on a, uh, on a metal plate like so, and uh, ran a timing belt between the two. Uh, but uh, this was where I had to remove the smaller knob and put on this, uh, this uh, uh, pulley device thing. And uh, yep, that's, uh, that's all, I, all I did, basically. Now, I can micro-step this motor uh, at very small steps, which will end up moving this platform as little as three or four microns a step. So what I'm probably going to do is uh, program an Arduino to run this and uh, legitimately it'll be a $20 automated macro rail. So this might, might be something you want to build for yourself, but you can't do it unless you have a very, very smooth carriage. And this is perfect for that. I have tried to do this with other uh, carriages, with other uh, rails, and I've never been successful because I, I didn't have the, the easy fluid motion of the two bearings and the uh, very high quality uh, worm screw. Works great here. And uh, my, my first few uh, trial efforts have worked fine. It makes for a very simple, very easy to, to use macro rail. Uh, it's not going to have any of the bells or whistles that the, the, the branded ones do, but uh, it's really for people who, who uh, want to spend as little as possible and get something that's functional. But that's, that's for another time. We'll talk, about, we'll talk about all that, probably do a set of videos on it. But for me to trust this uh, with this particular role, uh, it had to be the best one I could find. And uh, it really is. It's absolutely perfect for this precision work, which would also make it perfect for using as a precision XY if you were to get two of these. The, um, the rail is, is not cheap. I think when I uh, last checked on the, uh, on the website uh, of Fittest, it's uh, about $89. So it's cheaper than the, than the, the Nisi version, uh, but just by a little bit. And uh, it is every bit as well built. Um, it doesn't have the, the, the name brand recognition, but it probably one day will. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice, solid, reliable manual rail. It is a manual rail. Don't, don't look at this and think this is something that comes with it. You have to build this, but I can show you how. Uh, it, it is just a, a very standard uh, but very reliable rail. I haven't had any problem. I've been using them both now for about three months. And uh, as a positioning system, they work great. As a macro rail, they work great. So if you're in the market for one, this is uh, a little cheaper than the, the, the Mark I that we uh, looked at before. And uh, I think that, that you won't go wrong with it.
So for the fourth day of Christmas, get yourself a fittest MR180 Mark II, a great little manual macro focusing rail. You'll like it. Now, for our book today on the fourth day of Christmas, this is something completely different. I'm gonna recommend a book by a friend of mine. His name is Dennis Miller, and he is a composer and an artist. And uh, he's a graphic artist as well as a macro photographer. So uh, he's, uh, he's one of us. And uh, he's a very talented artist. And this is one of the most fun books I have looked through in a long time. Uh, so I would uh, strongly recommend this if you're into art and you like unusual things. This book, Hidden Images, a sampler by Dennis Miller, 2018 to 2020, is a wonderful example of his work. It's very inspirational, beautifully made book. I have no idea where to get this from, but I will do some research and find out. It'll be in the show notes. That's my recommendation for day four. It seems like we've been doing this longer. Is it still winter time? So on day four, a two-header. Dennis Miller's book, Hidden Images, a sampler, and also the fittest MR180 Mark II macro focusing rail. I will see you on day five. Until then, good night.